Okay, I want to talk quickly about virtual hosts on Apache. So let's say that you want to do some testing and experimenting on your computer. You want to run two different domain names, uh, whether it's act you're actually hosting something or you're just trying to do some cross-domain Ajax stuff and you want to experiment and see how things work. You can, with your hosts file and with your Apache config file, actually do that. You can set up multiple domain names, multiple hosts to run on your computer. So, first of all, for Apache, um, I've, I'm on the Mac side here. I'm running MAMP. That's my version of Apache that I'm running. Inside the MAMP folder, there's a config folder, conf folder. Inside of that, there's Apache, and then there's your httpd.conf file. And I've got this file open over here in brackets. So this file is all the settings that Apache uses as its defaults when it's starting up. Anytime you make a change to this, you have to make sure that you restart your server. So stop the servers, restart the servers every time you make a change. Otherwise, it will just be continuing to use the old cache version that it used when it first or when it last started up. So how do we do this? How do we create these different domains? Well, you will have a couple of default settings that are in the config file already, and you can just leave those there. There'll be one called server name. So localhost is my default server name. I'm using port 443. Uh, HTTPS is what I'm running on my server. And document root. This is the default place where you will put all of your files. Now, I'm going to set up three different domains. I'm going to set up three different folders that I'm using as roots with different domain names. We will come in here and create three separate virtual hosts. Now, I've also, a little bit uh, higher up in here, I've added a listen command. So I've added listen80 was already there, and I've added listen8080. So Apache will be listening on both of these ports. You can put a bunch of different listen commands here. If you want to listen on different ports, you just add multiple commands for listen. So I'm listening on those two different ports. And what I'm going to do is, if somebody's coming to 127.0.0.1 port 80, I'm going to point them to this default folder. Or if they use thelma.org, I'm also going to point them to this folder. If they use louise.org, I'm going to point them to a folder called 8080 inside of there. And you can see in here the virtual host definition. I'm adding the port number right here. So here's port 80, here's port 8080. Now, I've got a local address on my local network. So I can use this one as well. This is the loopback address for my computer. This is how my computer is viewed on my local Wi-Fi network. So 192.168.2.16, that's my computer as well, the same as this address, coming in on port 80 or 8080. So this one's saying either one of these. If you type in this address with either port number, 80 is the default. If you don't type anything, that is the address that will be used. That's the port number that will be used with the address. Or if I use example.com, it will route to this address as well. Now, I'm also setting up my hosts file. If you've watched my previous video on the hosts file, you'll know how to edit that. Here, I'm saying if somebody types in either of these two domain names, they will map to 192.168.2.16. If somebody types in localhost or thelma.org or louise.org, route it to 127.0.0.1. So these are my two IP addresses. These three things are routing to this one. These two things are routing to this one. So I should be able to use any of those three entries to look at one and any of these four entries to look at the others. Now I can't put IP or sorry port numbers in the hosts file. I can only put them here. So with example.com, with the 192 address, I'm listing both. These ones, I'm saying it's the same IP address, but 80 is going to go to this folder, or 8080 will go to this folder. So I have a whole bunch of different entries. And what I've done is I've made the change to my host file. So I've made this change, saved it. I've made the changes in here. I've saved these. I've restarted my web server. I've closed my browser, cleared out the cache, restarted it. So I'm going to I'm using Safari just for this example. And here's all the different versions. So I've got these separate files. 
inside my htdocs folder, I have an index.html file. And it says 127.0.0.1.80 or localhost.80. These are the ones that we're accessing. Or we can also add to that um, 80 is thelma.org. So let's add that one in here too. There we are. So any of these addresses, any of these three addresses will work to access this file. Here's one that's inside the folder 8080. So here's my full path to the file. It's got this extra one step. And if you've used this or we can say localhost and that'll work or we can say louise.org colon 8080. Any of those will work to point to this file. And then my other one, which is in a completely different place, this is in my documents folder. It's users, Griffiths, documents, code, index.html. So this is a completely different one. And I can use this IP address with port 80 or with port 8080, or I can use that or I can come down here and this can be example.com and any of those will work. So we've got all these different options coming back over in here now. So this one is 127.0.0.1 with no port number which means 80 is being used. It's the default. I'll refresh this and there it is. So thelma.org. So we can change this and say thelma.org same page or localhost with no port number which means port 80 same file so same things all of those come over here 192.168.2.16 with no port number which means port 80 there we are so that was the first one with port 80 we can come in here and we can say okay what about 8080 yeah points to the same file what about example.com same file and then these are just all the variants uh, example.com thelma.org 127.0.0.1 8080 there's the 8080 showing up let's refresh this one because I think yep we added those other two lines here's louise.org with port 8080 there we are so what I will do is I will leave a code gist that has these entries and the entries from the host file. So I'll make two code gists out of those and I'll put those in the comments for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, if you found this useful, please share with other people. And as always, thanks for watching.